And we're going to hear from you this morning to tell us more on your experience on the ground and talk about a raft of issues as well when it comes to general election and women. A big challenge as well is uh, the gender, gender parity rule that we know is back in the, in, the, in the house. And of course, you've been chairing this, I know, in, in some few weeks uh, regarding the two third gender rules. So is this time forth likely to pass through? People now seeing what has happened on the ground, are they now able to shoot it down or what is the future of that ruling as well? So you will walk to, to the point this morning and of course you, I will give you the, the rules of the game this morning. I have my bell with me and my two cards just to make sure that we are keeping in touch with time and uh, of course if you go overboard, I'll ring the bell for you. So if you see the luminous green card, that means you're halfway right in your speech you have five minutes and the red one is just to alert you that you should, you should be winding and beyond that i'll ring the bell so i'll give you time to just speak to kenyans this morning your camera is right ahead of you right that is camera one you can just look straight to that but of course you can also take your reaction from us as well to just you know give you some sign and to egg you on as well so you have five minutes this morning dr joyce laboso let me try and also t to set up my my alum, <laughs> but you can begin now. You have five minutes. Okay, thank you, Debal. Um, the last time I was here, it was um, when we were still, you know, sort of uh, fantasizing about these positions that um, we were looking for. Um, for myself, of course, I'm running for governor of Bomet County. And at the time, it sounded like it was something so far away, you know, and that we still had so much time, you know, um, to prepare for, for, for this governorship. Now, you know, I'm back here, and um, I've just been through a grueling experience of, um, of uh, uh, carrying out the party primaries. Um, and for me, um, this was extremely crucial because I know that my county is a jubilee zone, and therefore that election was almost going to um, be the final election because um, the outcome of that election um, is actually, uh, um, I knew, was extremely crucial. I know that, um, as I had suspected, and which of course didn't come out in uh, in uh, in, um, in the way the, the party the party prepared for the elections, um, as we were informed, uh, they were working on some research that had clearly said that um, what was uh, expected and that done many years back uh, was that there could never be anything more than 50 percent turnout of um, election. I mean, of of, uh, of electorate in party primaries. Um, of course, that was proved to be extremely wrong, um, and by the time we held our own um, nominations, uh, there was almost a crisis, uh, because when everybody found that there were only 50% of, um, of, uh, of, 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 of no, and even less, 50% and less of uh, ballot papers, mm -hmm. uh, there was almost a crisis, and, and I'm sure you saw in Bomet, we, we, we actually said, no, we can't not start because even by six in the morning there were queues of up to over over 200 300 people by six ready to cast their vote and you have a ballot you know 100 uh, ballot papers mm -hmm. um you, you know we already saw that this was really going to be a crisis so what i want to say and i think this is what is also been uh, has also come out that uh, we need to do party primaries a lot earlier and then like, as has been suggested almost a year before and on top of that, we need to remember that um, as we have boxed ourselves mm -hmm. into, you know, the, 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 the no party hoping, um, that this uh, party, theref therefore, party primaries almost become um, the real election in most of the, of the areas, especially the strongholds of, um, of the parties that we represent. So I would like to say, um, uh, now that I have... Um, gone through that process successfully um, and come out a, a winner on the other side. Um, I want them to turn to my women folk because a lot of the women have been particularly um, afraid um, of going for this gubernatorial seat. Um, I am sure that you have seen uh, a lot more confidence in the women 
a lot more in terms of numbers and who have performed uh, well so far. I'm sure you, you know uh, Waiguru has gone through uh, the process. I, uh, Wavinya, I think, has also gone through. I know she's in court this morning. Um, and I, I hope, I don't know, I think charity is also going to be there. So if we have, and I believe, we get at least even five women <laughs> or even three women um, uh, going through the, 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 um, the elections on the 8th of May, I can assure you that Council of Governors is going to be a different Council of Governors because I believe um, uh, women coming into uh, leadership at that level are going to have a different perspective. The lenses that the women are, are going to use and the lenses that they are going to use even in engaging and even in the service delivery uh, to the people that they represent is going to be a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. And I believe, and I would want to uh, also tell the people of Bomet, First of all, to thank them very, very much um, for having uh, really given me a very good boost and given me the confidence to know that they have chosen me to be their representative in uh, Jubilee Party. I would want to tell them that what I promised on the campaign trail, what I told them that this was going to be a different bomet, that I am going to focus on development, not politics, mm -hmm. that I am going to focus on um, service delivery, um, water provision, which is a crisis in Bomet. I'm going to look at looking at uh, uh, you know creation, uh, employment creation, uh, wealth creation. What can we do to improve um, the plight of the people of Bomet? Right now, I am sure you know that um, uh, we have this high cost of living that is almost um, going to uh, really uh, give us a problem. And if by August, and I want to ask my government, which I believe is a, a listening government, that this cost of living is going to affect us, and we need to very quickly find a way of reducing the cost of hunger, reducing the cost of sugar, making sure that this cost of living is brought down, because this is going to be a factor in, um, in the coming election. Um, and I want to encourage my women, uh, especially the women that are, are running in politics, that uh, it can be done. And please do not be intimidated. Um, do not allow anybody to bring you down. Just you know, stick to what you have decided and uh, be focused on the areas that you, are, you want to, to, to address and ask the women voters that please give women a chance. Come out in large numbers and give your daughters, give your sisters, give your wives a chance to be leaders in this country. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Roger, stay on before you move because uh, we want to just paper you also with some questions for you. One or two. Bomet County has been ranked, I think, the third or the second most corrupt county in the country. How are you planning to actually lift your county from that lowest aim of corruption that is sunk in right now? And is it true? Is it ranked second, or I think it's second <laughs> most corrupt country in the county? Well, I don't want to make any judgments, but I, clear, I can tell you there is a big problem in the way um, the affairs of Bomet are run. Um, if you look at even, you know, the, the, the things that are claimed to, 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 be, to have been done and what you find on the ground, what you see on, on the budgets and what is appropriated uh, for functions and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, in the county. And when you go to the ground, and I'm talking because I'm a member of parliament in one of the constituencies, um, there is a lot that is desirable uh, that needs to be done. And, and really, uh, that is the first area that I'm going to, to address. We want Bomet and this pe the people of Bomet get ready because um, I, know, I know corruption fights back. But um, I'm ready for the task and I want to promise the people of Bomet that give me a chance in August confirm what you have just uh, done in the party primaries and i can assure you that uh, your resources will be well managed 
under my my my, my leadership and um, I also want to assure the current um, personnel that are working in the county government um, there's been a lot of rumors that I am uh, coming you know the, the people the public always give me a broom every time we have we are in a public function yes. everybody will bring a broom and they are always saying Joyce come and sweep come and clean out this uh, uh, this the, the, this place I want to assure them that the broom even in any mother cleans the house it does not clean the children so don't be afraid about um, my coming in or, or your positions everything will be done due process will be followed and i'm sure that you are safe in the hands of joyce probably joyce is even going to be able to help you to get permanent jobs you are going to give you even a scheme of service uh, which are not now currently in place all right yes. so that was a rumor because uh, people were saying yeah you've said you actually patched the house completely <laughs> rid it of corruption even <laughs> the county officials right now who are there so it's good that you're clarifying no this. no yeah i will we'll, we'll get rid of the dirt not the people that's yes. not the people yes. thank you very much you. all right joyce laboso there she is the governor aspirant Bomet County. Up next, we want to hear from Esther Pasaris. She garnered the ODM ticket and she'll walk to the podium to also talk to us in a bit about her aspirations and how she is going to change Nairobi County when it comes to the issues of women, right? And to tell us, of course, we are given to understand the budget allocation for women wrapped in the country is very low and yet there's so much expectation that is also from the public regarding women representative in Nairobi. So she's going to speak to us about how she will dramatically change this city when it comes to speaking for the issues of women and that after that, other issues as well. I see you've got five minutes beginning now. Good morning, Kenya. Um, you know, Running for the woman rep position, and every time you go into an interview, everybody says, oh, did we need these positions for women? And uh, watching the Pentagon, which is five men, and looking at the poster now that's just come out for Team Nairobi, if there wasn't the, the seat for the women rep, then Team Nairobi would only have had men. So I think we do need the woman representative seat in parliament until we reach a point where the electorate and Kenyans themselves support women in leadership. It is a very expensive exercise. It is also um, difficult for a woman because she has children um, and she has a family. And when you're out there campaigning, you're leaving your children. I mean, the other day I had a phone call from my son and he says, hi, mom. And he got me on the phone and he goes, oh, I still have a mom, do I? And it's really painful for a woman when you realize that, my goodness, I'm running around trying to get votes, trying to talk to people, and here I am neglecting my own. So to create that balance uh, during the elections is very difficult. I get phone calls all the way up to 1 o'clock in the morning, you know, and then I get a lot of messages from people saying, oh, somebody's died, I need school fees, um, um, I need transport to go and bury my mom, or I need food. I don't have food at home. I can't afford to pay my rent. Somewhere along the line, the leadership that has been in this country has actually confused the electorate on what exactly a leader is supposed to do in any of the positions that they are presented. Mm -hmm. You see, now the electorate looks at leaders as people that we put in office, you become very rich, you have a lot of money, your money is our money and we want it. And I say, no, that is a job that I'm applying for in a very, very difficult way. I mean, when you think about it, Debal, I've already spent about 10 million shillings, about 6 million on promotional material, on, on posters. It's expensive. The county woman rep for Nairobi is 17 constituencies. And those 17 constituencies, wherever you go, they want a T-shirt, they want a hat, they want an umbrella, they want a poster. So you try and do the best that you can because this is the way you market yourself during campaigns and it's expensive. You need the roadshow, it costs money. Um, the petrol, the security, etc. So I'm saying that it is an expensive exercise and I want the Kenyan middle class to understand that they are the employers of the majority of Kenyans. And when we call you and we say, we want help so that we can run this election, do not think that, oh, it's your, it's your position, it's your decision. You, we shouldn't be part of it. The Kenyan middle class has a moral obligation to try and ensure that we have good leadership in this country.
And you can contribute, whether it's 100 shillings, whether it's 10 shillings, whether it's 5 shillings. You don't even have to be asked. You can contribute, contribute your time. Sometimes I go to a place and somebody says, I voted for you, but I never saw you. I don't know what your manifesto is. So I say that if you know me, then talk to the person that you meet on the market. Talk to the person that you meet in the matatu, on the queue in the bank. Talk to the person and sell me because I can't reach everyone. Because you can do something to ensure that we get lo good leadership in, in parliament. When it comes to, this is a very difficult thing for a woman. It is difficult. But as women, if we want to have better lives for the women that are our sisters out there, and the majority of the voters that are in the informal settlements, then we have got to support each other. All right? Because th if this gender bill doesn't go through, then, <laughs> and, and <laughs> Labos is just telling me it won't go through, then we're going <laughs> to probably see the scrap of uh, affirm, uh, a gradual affirmative action and no women in parliament. And the issues that affect the majority of the electorate, from the single mothers to the widows to inheritance issues um, to jobs, you know, to sexual violence and domestic violence, we need to ensure that we have women, because women can articulate these issues more. Men form a boys' club. A man will not care so much about this woman was raped or this woman was stripped or et cetera. When we had my dress, my choice, majority of the people that were there, you know, were women. You know, we had very few men coming, and I thank the men that came out. We still haven't got to that situation where a man feels that he's supposed to be a protector of women. So the women have to come out and protect the women. And for women to get into the leadership, we need to embrace them, we need to support them, because it's an expensive exercise. Otherwise, it will only be men, and we will be recycling the same men that are in leadership because they have money. Now, to the youth that are out there, it's been really difficult um, facing some of the youth. I mean, I have a scar now on my leg that I got from Chomazon to the GSU um, uh, post on Thicker Road, because the youth saw T-shirts in my car, they were in that petrol station with another aspirant. Mm -hmm. They actually broke into my car, took the T-shirts. Now, I want to tell you something. When you get into somebody's car and you take a T-shirt by force, you're stealing. All right? And then you don't care about who you're hurting. You, I mean, my, my bodyguard was scruffled up. They robbed her. So we do have a situation where the youth feel that it's okay and it's right to rob. All right? We cannot put all these youth in our prisons. Mm -hmm. What we have to do is create sustainable jobs for our youth. Now, I'm saying the reason why I want to be your woman rep is because I recognize these problems. And for me to be your woman rep, I need you to come out and vote. Now, there's one thing I want to end up with. It's the business opportunity. In those queues, there's a lot of business opportunity. And I want to talk to the private sector that run businesses. Set up camp outside polling stations and try and have even you can rent a chair. You know, all those people who have chairs for parties. Mm -hmm. Rent a chair for 10 or 15 bob during election so somebody can sit on the queue. Because I'll tell you one thing. It's gruesome for somebody to stand on a queue for five or six hours. It becomes a punishment to vote. People need water. People need soda. People need something to eat. So there's a lot of business opportunity during elections. Don't miss that. And I want to tell Kenyans, I really respect you for coming out to vote. You came out in the primaries. Come out during the August elections. Do not vote your tribe. Do not vote your party. Vote a good leader. Thank you. All right. Before you uh, move on, just a bit of questions for you as well. You have 17 constituencies yeah. and a budgetary allocation of how much? 120 million shillings. A hundred and, yeah, about 127 million per constituency. Yes. Very little money. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how are you planning out to make sure that you have an even kill for all these constituencies? Well, you know, the thing is, everybody looks at you and they expect you to solve the problems in their life, so from unemployment to lack of water to sewerage to housing to jobs, okay? Um, or finance, you know? So I would be the bridge between the people and the institutions that are supposed to provide these services, like the youth fund. A lot of people can still tell me they don't access the youth fund, or it's tedious, or the Weso fund. So I'll be the bridge. And, and then on the other hand, I keep telling Kenyans, a few years ago I came up with an initiative called One in a Million. And of course the government refused to register it, and in the end I, uh, I, it didn't take off. Right now I'm going to start an initiative called Ten Twende Kazi. And for me it's telling Kenyans that 7 million shillings cannot give me the possibility or the strength to solve your problems. So let's empower each other. If 
Everywhere I go, I tell people, save 200 shillings every month. Over five months, it will be 1,000. Let's own our problems. Let's solve our problems. So if I can get a million men and a million women united together, each contributing 1,000 shillings, that will be 2 billion shillings. With 2 billion shillings, we can create industries. We can improve our markets. We can create playgrounds. We can create rehabilitation centers. We can create feeding centers. I saw on TV recently a woman having a strong tea and a dry um, ugali you know, for, for dinner, that is sad. No Kenyan should sleep hungry. We need feeding centers. We also need to take some of the things that we have in our houses that we're not using and find a way to put them. If you go to London, I mean, or you, you, the UK, every street has a shop, mm -hmm. right, where people are selling things so that they can actually contribute to helping the poor. Some of, these are some of the initiatives I want to start. But Thank Twende you. Kazi is about us owning our problems and taking charge of our problems. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. Thank you very much. We appreciate Esther Basar is there, Nairobi Women Representative Aspirant. And of course, uh, we will be looking and drilling deep at some of the issues she's raised uh, moving forward as well. Right now, we want to hear from Gladys Bos Chole. She's the former uh, Registrar of the Judiciary, Chief Registrar of the Judiciary. And also, she is a Wasungishu Women Representative Aspirant. She's going to talk to us on what are some of the challenges that she's learned from the ground when it came to the party primaries and also looking at the crystal ball where is she headed as well. Gladys, you have five minutes uh, beginning now. Let me also s try and set my alarm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dibal, and good morning, Kenya. And uh, congratulations to Joyce and uh, Esther. I'm very proud of you all, and I've been watching your campaigns as it went on. And I could feel it because I was going through the same thing. Um, as you know, I did run in the party primaries for, and by the way, Dibal, let's correct this. It's woman county representative, mm -hmm. not women rep. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's not even grammatically correct to say that. Yes. <laughs> so I think, I we, think we need to start getting it right yeah. in the media. <laughs> it's, it's a women woman county, county representative. Yeah, it's a county representative who's a woman. Yeah. So it's a matter of. So semantics. when you're referring to the group or the association, you can say association of women representatives. That's the group of them. But if it's the individual position, and I think that's the official name on the ballot paper, and and so on. So it'd be All nice right. to be able to it's, correct that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I think um, I, having listened to my colleagues here, they've said a lot of the things that I could have said, but I think what I thinking it's it's um, when I started this journey. Uh, it wasn't something that I'm sure people that I previously spoke to, I said I would never go into politics. But as circumstances would have it is that I spent more time um, at home, in the countryside, at the farm, speaking to people during the time that I was out of the public service. And that's how it got me thinking. And so I probably started as almost a reluctant uh, political candidate. But as time went on, I was inspired every single day by the people that I met. In fact, they thought, they used to tell me, you inspire us. And I would tell them, no, you inspire me. And I want to thank the people of Wasingishu County who encouraged me and spoke to me. And every day that I listened to the issues that they have and the challenges that they have, it broke my heart. And it made me more resolved every morning to get up again and go out there. So eventually for me, the campaign stopped being a campaign. It, stopped, it became a learning experience about the challenges that our people face. And every evening I'd take my notebook and I'd type down all the problems that I'd had that day and begin to think, what are the legislative interventions? What are the social interventions? What are the humanitarian interventions in order to resolve those problems? So I ended up coming up with almost a huge journal of the problems. You go to a place, and then the other thing that I realized is that most of them know the problem that they're facing. It was amazing. And, and it was also, and I also, it was refreshing listening to real problems. You go to a place and the women tell you they have no hair at the top of their head because they've been carrying water, you know? You go to a place and they tell you this water tank was put up and it's never had any water and you realize there's a problem. You go to a place, the land is so fertile, and there's a huge river, except the water can't be taken to the land nearby. Actually, our, I realized that our people need uh, minimum resources, but 
employed in a certain way so that we can have maximum results. And it is possible. And for me, it was such a pleasure sometimes resolving some of the issues because it was so much easier. Remember, I was from the public service. Mm -hmm. And my last job at the judiciary, you're arguing about whether they're getting a C-class Mercedes or an E-class Mercedes or whether their office is carpeted or they have a water dispenser in the office. And here I was listening to real problems, mm -hmm. whether people will feel their children, whether people can take someone to hospital tomorrow, whether someone can be able to get life threat, I mean, life saving um, uh, medication. So for me, after a while, I said to myself, we, we, we have these problems that we magnify that are nothing. So for me, I have enjoyed the campaign trail. I kept telling people, even if I don't win, I am having a great time. Even if I don't win, I have learned so much that I could never have gone to school to do. And I realized I could use my abilities, my fundraising abilities to and problem solving skills to help my people. Because remember, I worked in the public service. When I was at the electoral commission, I raised money from development partners to be able to run the election. I also raised money to supplement the budget when I was at the judiciary. I raised money with us Kenya Law Reports to supplement the government budget to run the programs there. Now I can get to do it for my people who have real problems, you know? So it was nice to be able to use my networks again. I'd call up and I'd say, can I get so many Mabatis? And people would come in. And I'd say, is it possible for us to access medication for this? And we were able to get that. I was able to tell people, you know what? You just had a cut on your hand and a broken hand. We don't have to go to the referral hospital. Let's go. So even encouraging, even simple things like encouraging to people, let's not congest the referral hospital. Let's go to the hospitals that have been built. Because one of the things I was amazed is there's a lot of dispensaries and a lot of small hospitals that have been built in the countryside. Except that people don't go to them because sometimes you don't find the medication or the bandages. And so I realized if they had bandages, they would do it. Because why should somebody go for 10 stitches to the referral hospital? No wonder the referral hospital can't deal with real problems. So every day I was solving a problem. Every day it was amazing to see that. But, um, and, and, uh, and I was amazed at how much they knew about their problems and they all know the solutions. You just have to re help them implement that solution. The other thing that I learned that was amazing mm -hmm. was uh, that watu ni mali, yeah? That people are wealth. My grandfather always said that to me. It took people to run the campaign. In fact, my biggest expenditure well, I told people, you don't need money, you need people. That is your ex most expensive resource in order to run the campaign. Because it took people to wake up at night and go and watch the ballot papers. It took people to work with me at night, into long hours, to leave their jobs to come and work with me. So I, I do realize that for the first time I realized you need people. And I stood on the shoulders of many, many people in order to do that. And most importantly, and that's why throughout the campaign I told people, I want to win your hearts, and I want you to believe in my vision. Then vote for me. I don't want you to vote for me because I have a fancy truck or um, I have a fancy campaign. No. I always said I wanted to reach out to people. And you'll notice that most of the time I walked on foot. Mm -hmm. And most of the time I was in my sports shoes campaigning because I said I want to speak to people. And most of the time I said I want to hear them. I don't want them to hear me. And that's how I ran the campaign, and I had a great time. I must thank the great people of Wasingishu County for giving me the opportunity. I am more resolved than ever mm -hmm. to work for them and change their lives. Right. Thank you, Deval. Thank you. And thank right. you, Kenya. Right. Don't move away from uh, the lectern yet. Okay. Uh, let me just paper you all with one or two questions as well. Yes. And of course, you know, this has been one of a ticklish uh, issue that has been a public domain. And I don't know how you've been able to fend it off. Because mm -hmm. many people will ask then, why are we having Boz Cholet uh, running for uh, women county rape? And we, mm -hmm. she's not been exonerated from the court case as well. Maybe yeah. you want to clarify on this a bit. Yes. I think uh, the law is very clear. Uh, you're innocent until proven guilty. The, law, the election law is also very clear that... You, the, 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 the law on why, how you cannot run for political office is set out in statute. And it says if you've had a conviction that lasts more than six months and you've exhausted all appeals. So I think that is a dead issue. That is an issue that is being used by my opponents. Believe me, if we allowed that to happen, that the moment someone raises 
uh, any allegations against you and before they are proven, you know, the constitution is clear, it protects us. Because we know there's a lot of malicious people out there who think in order to stop you, uh, you know very clearly, my battle with the judiciary was about the succession politics. And interestingly, Dibal, I'm surprised that you still ask, because one of the shocking things during my campaign is that at every corner of Wasingishu County, in the remotest places, with the lowest literacy levels, each of the people stood up and said, aren't you the, our daughter who was, who was, uh, who was uh, attacked for nothing, who was bundled out of office? Aren't you the woman who fought a battle of a thousand men all on your own and no one stood up for you? They remember that. And that's why I must thank the vernacular stations because it was the vernacular stations that pulled that off. They told my story repeatedly. And my people began to understand. We laid, they all know that so far, and up to now, it was confirmed that no money was lost in the judiciary. That no money, uh, that, uh, that it was, it, uh, there, there was no money lost, that there was no uh, project that didn't take off. They now realize, and believe me, our people are smarter than that. I was so surprised because when I went into the campaign, I was prepared with a strategy of how to be able to counter that and explain it. But when I got there, even before I spoke, in areas that I'd never been in my life, they stood up and said, Aren't you the one? We know that they hounded you out. We know that you were treated unfairly. We know that what was done to you was wrong. And they said, you're one of our finest. We are going to get you back there because we know you can make a difference in our lives. And if they don't want you in Nairobi, we'll take you and you can work for us. All right. So how many... How many <laughs> so it ended up being very positive for me as opposed to being negative. All right. We have 17 constituencies uh, from Esther Pasares uh, yes. from Wasingishu County. How many constituencies are we looking Wasingishu at? Wasingishu County has six constituencies mm -hmm. and it is about uh, close to half a million eligible uh, voters. Um, extremely rich county. We have no reason why anybody in Kenya should be starving when you have Wasingishu County. We find places that people can produce food and yet they have nowhere to sell it. Thank you. We've just got to find the markets. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Of course, Thank we you. will be discussing this much, much later in the course Thank of the program. You. But let's see what also people are saying, a rush of tweets we can see also uh, from our Twitter handle and Usha Jose Kandathil, she's standing by. Usha? Right, got a lot of tweets coming. Remember, if you still haven't gotten your tweet through, uh, AM Live NTV is our home. That is on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. So keep your comments coming. So um, we have Africa Alive who says, women know the solutions to their problems. That's why we need more women in leadership to fix these problems. We have um, John Gidanga who says, the constitution favors women, but they have not taken full advantage of it. They are being pushed to unite and support themselves. We have um, at Steve who says, should it be that only women vote for women representative because they don't ac articulate men issues, women for women, men for us all. <laughs> I'm sure the ladies in the panel have a lot to say. Um, Joyce, maybe you would take this one. <laughs> that's, that's very interesting. Women, for the women um, representative uh, position, um, really, uh, it is an affirmative action um, uh, seat because we have tried all the years to try and increase the number of women in politics and have been have not been successful, despite everything. We, the education, I think there's no, no other country with, as, with women as educated as, as Kenyans. But the political arena has been difficult for us to get. So this is an affirmative action seat, and we hope, I think it was for 20 years. Um, I don't know whether we'll need to be added at the end of the 20 years, um, or, or because it's a very valuable seat right now, because we have come and found some of the most you know, um, creative and and, and interesting occupants um, to that seat. So for me, I say um, uh, it, 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 women should it's not just be women voting for women alone. Um, and I don't think it is true that they do not articulate men's, uh, men's issue. Um, I know a lot of the women, um, uh, women, women reps have been talking about like issues of alcoholism and, um, and, and, and drug abuse and that. And that I don't think is a, a predominantly a woman's issue. So uh, men out there, please uh, vote for your women reps. Um, uh, they can contribute a lot to changing the lives of uh, men as well as boys. Right, so there you have it. Uh, we also have 
<coughs> Ali Daib, who says, uh, Gladys Cholet should have a shot at gubernatorial seat. She is governor material. I wish the trio all the best. <laughs> that is um, nice. <laughs> we have Ali Daib again, finally, who says, yes, why not? Just watch the space. Men must devise new tactics to woo voters not to elect ladies. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, yes, uh, watch this space. That's all we could, um, that's all the comments that I could read. But remember, keep the conversation going on social media. AM Live NTV is where you can find us. Back to you, Dibal. Right, many thanks indeed, Usha, there with the comments from uh, social media. You can see lots of them, but we, of course, we can sample all of this today. But uh, as we continue, we'll be picking one or, or two also to discuss. So we continue with our panel here and uh, what they've raised so far when it comes to uh, what was happening with the primaries as well. And of course, this will act as a bellwether when we're getting up towards general election in August the 8th. Uh, 2017 challenges and of course polls and we saw women also really coming out and forced to also uh, vote and this time forth of course we've seen maybe in the council of governors as is the desire of Joyce Loboso that we'll have one two or three mm -hmm. women governors mm -hmm. but there's also fierce competition on the ground as well because they're saying that we have the governors having their way with all. We have the governors or the incumbent governors who are really, really having, you know, the wherewithal, as I mentioned, they're having the the resources within the counties. But what is really happening when it comes to you and matching up with the incumbents as well? Um. <sighs> Like I said, for me, I thought the more, um, the more difficult competition was the party primaries. Because as I said, this is a predominantly a jubilee zone. True governors have, um, have the resources, they, they, they are incumbents, so, so therefore they have that advantage of you know, maybe having um, the networks. But for me, our governor has chosen to, to go to a different party and a different uh, coalition. And, and I, I think for me, that will, uh, I will no longer be selling myself as Joyce. I'll be selling, uh, I am the Jubilee candidate. And therefore, it will be a competition between Jubilee and NASA. And as I said, um, I, I believe that um, the people of Bomet will vote uh, a Jubilee because that is, uh, and, and their, their voting patterns are, are very clear. You know, over the years, if you look at all the all the years um, uh, back, you know, once they've chosen a coalition that, or rather, a party, a party to, to to support, and so really, we'll be selling ourselves as the package, the package of uh, the Jubilee um, uh, family, the Jubilee Brigade um, in Bomet, and uh, I, I believe um, we just need to have peaceful elections, peaceful campaigns. Um, and, and I'm really believing that um, these people started something. It's not, uh, as I said, what we did was almost a general election. This one is not going to be any different. All right. Yes. So do you, do you trust the polls as well yourself? Because it seems uh, you are actually almost neck and neck with the current incumbent. But uh, we see what is happening with the polls when it comes to the reality of the ground, especially with the primaries. The outcome is diametrically different. That was opi opinion polls on them on 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 my popularity on them yeah. on the ground. Um, well, I don't want to say I don't trust them or or I trust them, but um, I want to emphasize that um, there is now a difference of where we are. We are really you know operating on very on a, on a very different premise now. Maybe yes, he has. A, he's a, he's a, he's of course the incumbent and um, has uh, has uh, has got the, the, the you know he's there are many people that he, uh, he has employed or uh, depend on 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 his um, you know on the fact that he's uh, he supported them in one way or another, but now the the, the, the you know the, the the line is really you know very clear now so it's not about incumbency it is not about um, it is about parties it's about parties really this right. is what this this final election is about parties it's not about, about parties. individuals okay let's see from uh, esther because it seems uh, <coughs> at this time fourth when we are looking also at the entire abumet kericho wasingishu it's not really a, a red zone as it is nasa we have also the incumbent from abumet county now who has moved as a fifth principle here within NASA as well. So it, how is this, do you think you as NASA, you will eat away from some of the votes of uh, Joyce Laboso? You know, um, first of all, I'd like to clarify on one of the tweets that came in. 
a lot of places that I go, a lot of men think that the woman rep position should be voted only for women, by women. <laughs> by women. So I think it's important <laughs> that the IBC looks at the patterns in the last election, whether we had a drop in the amount of people that voted for the woman rep. Do it, if you can, they can do an analysis. And if you actually had a drop, then you know that there are quite a few men out there that do not realize that they have to also vote for the woman rep. So um, it's um, so there's a misconception. Yes, that, okay. that it's a, only women voting for the women rep. So for me, um, we need that out there. When you vote the woman rep, she's going to look after the entire family of a woman, which includes the men, the youth, and the uh, uh, children as well. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to party politics and um, I mean, in Kenya, I think we've, we've always talked about the tribal divide. But recently, I actually uh, found out as I went down into the grassroots that the divide that Kenya has right now is not tribal. It's more poverty, uh, rich versus the poor. That's the biggest divide, the, the, the divide between the rich and the poor. So the tribal divide, I have a feeling, and I've seen this, a lot of people saying, we're going to vote for you even though we're in this party or that party. And I think that is a good place to be. Right? But having said that, I, I, I look at NASA and I see that NASA encompasses Kenya. All right? And it reflects on everyone. So I, I, um, I, I know that Bomet, uh, which is uh, my sister here is saying is a stronghold of, of Jubilee, I think they will be shocked that it really isn't. And the reason it isn't is because um, the votes, uh, the, the opinion poll is saying 50-50. Now, what happened in uh, Kiambu, right, where Kabogo was supposed to be 70% um, uh, favored? Now, if he goes, I don't know if he's running as an independent, but if he does go and he does win, then we know that the opinion poll was correct, and obviously there was something that was played on him. If he doesn't win, then we know that... Um, the opinion polls were correct. Opinion polls in Kenya have still not been trusted 100%, right? But I have a feeling that they're running uh, professional outfits and they're trying the best to give the best reflection of what the Kenyan voter is thinking and the patterns that he will vote by. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a wait and see. It's a wait and see situation. Uh, America had the same issues. Were the opinion polls off? You know, mm -hmm. so the margin of error maybe in Kenya is going to be different because our integrity levels are not correct. When we are asked the questions, we don't answer truthfully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Gladys. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, I'd just like to speak to one of the tweets where they said Gladys should have gone for governor position, and it's something that I thought long and hard about. And uh, for me, I, I was clear, and I told people, "Tell me what your problems are." And then when they said it, I said, "Then I'm better off working for you in the legisl in the legislature in, in uh, the National Assembly." But I also made it clear to my people that greatness comes from service, not from status. So it's not about the position that I take; it's what I do when I'm in that position, no matter how small or big. The other thing that I was very committed about is the issue of the image of women. I think what happened, especially coming, I'm, and I'm speaking for Wasingishu County, the incumbent in Wasingishu County probably never said a word in parliament from our records. She never was on the ground, and that was also confirmed. It is the first time I'm mentioning that. And I remember people had given up, and I said, I want to restore the image of women in Wasingishu County. I want to show them that women are competent yes. and that women can, can do it. And I was very impressed that even the remotest places I went to, people said, oh, it's good that we can have someone like you so that we can have someone who can speak like Joyce Laboso, so that we can also have someone in Wasingishu who can speak like Gladys Wanga. I was amazed that they know them. Mm -hmm. In fact, Gladys Wanga and Joyce Laboso kept coming up mm -hmm. as the women that I, they, want, they said, we want to send so that we have our own. So when they from other counties speak, we have our own that stuff. So you can see people are yearning for women leadership, not just for women to be put there as numbers. It's about women who can make a difference. So that one day, when my children, when my daughter stands, uh, says she wants to run for elective office, people will know that she's competent, that women can do it. And I think that's the image that all of us I want to change. I know that. Um, I was very committed, and if you heard me speak during the Nimama campaign, I asked Jubilee that they should give a direct ticket to Joyce Laboso. I said they should give a direct ticket to Ruth Odinga. They should give a direct ticket to Cecily Barire. Why? Because I said, if we have our very finest women, 
we should put them out there because that is how you resolve the issue. We'll never need affirmative action. Because if we front more competent women, what does happen is that the society begins to see that actually when you elect a woman, you get better results and they're as good as anyone else can mm -hmm. be, if yes. not better. Thank you. And so that is what we are trying to do. And for me, that's how I see myself. I am going to change the image of women leadership. All right. And I think I've already done that even in the way I conducted okay. my campaign. All right, thank you. Yeah. Uh, let, let's say for Mester, of course, you also, you're the founder and the chair of Adopt a Light. And of course, we know what you did for Nairobi. Uh, they call you with the Mama Mwangaza. But also you experienced challenges when it came to Nairobi County and, uh, you know, you able to have room to swing your cart as far as your services are concerned. Now that you're running for Women Room, how, how do you think you'll be able to actually challenge what you have? We still have court cases as well? Uh, you know, the thing is, yeah, the court cases never end. Uh, it's, we, we have system problems and corruption is at play at every stage and in every institution. I mean, when, when I came up with the adopt a Life pro project, the, the thing that you expected would be that the government would embrace you, the county government would embrace you. I mean, it, at one point, we were in a court, and the judge actually asked the city council uh, guys that were there, you once were in court f arguing for this project. You're the same people who are in court with a different affidavit saying you're not for this project. What happened? Of course, what happened is they got money and they were compromised. And the sadness is uh, the idea that a woman can do a very big business. I remember the late Mwenje in Parliament saying, how can this woman get such a big contract? You know, we only think of women as Mama Boga. And when I come up with this Trendy Kazi initiative, it's not about, I mean, Mama Boga should be uh, embraced and, and also enhanced in her business. I don't want her on the streets. I want her in a proper store. I don't want her hustled. I don't want her levied charges. I mean, because at the end of the day, we, we have to understand that this citizen here is, is really struggling already. All right, with a lot of things. We have to understand where are our citizens at, you know? And I think something like a market store or even uh, uh, working on, uh, under the sun, the hot sun, and the city council Ascari still come there and want to get some money from you, you know? It's, it's tedious. We need transparent processes. And I feel that um, these transparent processes can only come if you have a woman out there who understands these problems and tries to articulate them to the institutions, and I did that successfully. I got the government to actually understand the value of lighting. I got the county government to actually partner with me and light up. Okay, eventually they threw me out, but at the end of the day, I've got a court case that's never had its day in Thank court. You. It's it's the way things are. Women right. have it rough, and I think if we have a good number of women and strong women mm -hmm. in parliament, we'll be able to join forces and fight for the women issues. Thank you. All right, we have callers hanging on the line. Let's just hear from our viewers as well who are hanging on the line. Hello, good morning. Uh, hello. Oh, good morning, Dubas. Morning to you. You have a question or contribution on Limo here? I have contribution. My name is Limo. I yeah. want to con con congratulate uh, my sisters in the panel yes. today. Yes, yes. From Laboso, Cholet, and Paras Pasaris. Mm -hmm. uh, what I can say to them is congratulations. You are won. You, uh, you have been nominated in your uh, various parties. And the band, what I want to tell my sisters is um, the parties this time, especially Jubilee, have tried very well to empower women. You know, Kenya has been saying women need to be given seats for them to come to parliament or to be senators or to be governors. They have worked very well. And, you know, the sky is the limit to them. Now, number two, they need to realize that uh, the women who have been voted out before, it's because they went to parliament and sleep. They did not articulate to Mama Mboga the way Esther Pastor said. And also, play when you go back to with women. What makes sure that you articulate with that farmer in the rural area? And Madam uh, Laboso, I know you will win. You'll be the governor of Bomet. Make sure that you empower that woman in Bomet. What I can tell my sisters in the panel. Now you are the voice of the women of today. Thank you. And the women of yesterday. Thank you. Thank you, Limo. Make, make sure that uh, uh, that you work hard. All right. Uh, the goodness of your panel. Like, before I finish uh, the ball, yes. I want to say you have a very good panel. You have you have a panel. You have a, a woman from Nairobi, from Ozingishu, and Bomet. 
Now, this is transparency. Let them go work. If they sleep in the job, we will face them 2022. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Limo, there. Thank we you. have also another caller hanging on the line. Let's uh, just hear from our caller from Nairobi as well. From Bormit? From Bormit? Morning. Yeah, morning to you. How are you? Very well, thank you. Yeah, I want to comment on the, on the three women. Yes, very briefly, Mr. Ntoye. They, uh, they are very good leaders. Yes. I hope they are going to make it. But I want to correct uh, Dr. Joyce Laboso that Bomet is uh, a jubilee zone. It is mm -hmm. no longer a jubilee zone. Uh, it is 50 50 as Esther Basari <laughs> has said. This is because uh, there are so many people who are starving now because uh, there is a lot of uh, a, lo a lot of uh, people living without uh, 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 supper. The government has increased a lot of uh, prices for food commodities, and uh, the Treasury PS was uh, reading the budget. He said that in two weeks the uh, the price of food will go to 105. And it is now 108. Sugar is getting to what is. This is a lot of uh, starvation in Kenya. Yes. At this moment, by Jubilee government. So I'm telling Dr. Joyce Laboso to be prepared for a tough fight with the instrument. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ntoya, there from Bometa. <laughs> Those are our two callers this morning. Of course, we can't take a lot of them because of also we're stuffed for time. But thank you, Ntoya and Limo. Right, let's just also, as we're winding up, because I know you okay. have to, to, to have leave, to that, yes, you have a meeting, eh? yes, right, but just I a few one. minutes, then we're winding up. Yes, I, I think I'll tell the, the caller, um, uh, that is his opinion. Um, I think even the polls showed very clearly um, that um, Bomet is, uh, was it 78 or 79% uh, jubilee? That's according to the polls, if we believe in, uh, in polls. And I also know that, uh, the, you know, these issues that are, are being raised, it is true, the cost of living. I think I just mentioned it myself that it is it is an issue and uh, and it is a real issue uh, a real problem uh, like um, like Cholet has been saying but um, uh, can it be 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 completely and absolutely uh, be blamed on the on on the Jubilee government we have had a drought a very serious serious drought Bomet for example we have not been able to grow maize for the last uh, for the last five years because of that uh, that maize disease that has been there um, and, 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 and a multiplicity of issues um, that even if it was another government that was there, I don't know whether they would have done anything differently. Thank so you. I know. I, I really want to tell him. And I'm prepared. To, um, I've come this far. I didn't come this far to, to, to go and, uh, you know, uh, dilly-dally in, the last, in, in the last bit. So I'm prepared for, for the you. fight. All right. Yes. Let's hear from Esther as we're winding up briefly. On? Uh, we're winding up. Just for closing oh, remarks. Headline okay. thoughts. Um, yeah, I, I, want, I want Kenyans, especially uh, the women, um, uh, to look at the opportunities for trade during the election day. And I want IEBC to really get out of the office, get on the ground, and start educating people on, uh, on the elections. And then also, um, the, the layouts of the ballots and everything, it has to be done pr transparently and clearly. I remember in the last election, I mean, I had my names, they, they, they mixed up all my names, so it was a bit of a confusion as well. I think it's important that you stay neutral, you conduct a free, fair, and credible election, Thank you. and we cannot tell you that enough. And civic education, you should have started it yesterday. Today is when you should do it. Tomorrow will be too late. Thank you. Thank you. Gladys. Um, I think for me it's a message to IABC as we go towards the elections. Okay, first a message to the people of Kenya that we must let us commit to having peaceful elections yes. and protect our country. I think that's the most important. And secondly, IABC owes us the ability to run the elections properly. And I think we've discussed a lot about the long queues and all. We don't need to have long queues, Esther, because we know there's 480 minutes in a day, and IABC knows that. If it takes seven minutes for someone to vote on average, divide that and say how many people can vote. And tell yourself that there is no point, and I think I'm going to ask my sister here, when, you, when you're voting the budget, just make sure that IBC has sufficient budget. They can have 10 lines of 300 people. They'll be done voting by 1 o'clock. You, you know? So more personnel. So it just more have personnel. more personnel. More there is personnel. no magic more about streams. it. 
Australia. Why should you have, and, and the, the schools where we have the elections, they have classrooms. Mm -hmm. So we are able to run the, every classroom can be a polling center. The lowest put you. it at 700, mm -hmm. but we can put it at less. It is possible to run a flawless election. Thank so you. let's get working now. Thank you.